Phillies insider. Frank Close joins me on Tuesdays at this time as we take a look at this Phillies team. The roster is now set for Thursday's opener. We'll dive into that, your questions, and more with 97.3 ESPN.com Phillies insider Frank Close, who joins me right now on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline just a couple of days from opening day. What's going on, Frank? Not much, Mike. How are you? All is well, man, and the uh, decision was made last night by the Phillies. They kept a little suspense. I guess they uh, had a little couple extra conversations, but finally we got the decision that you were on the whole time that it would be Odubel Herrera going back to the minor league affiliate site and that will be Adam Hastley and Roman Quinn getting the opening day roster. So I know you're not surprised, but what do you think went into the decision to send Herrera back? I think it's two things, really. I mean, the first is he really didn't play all that well. (laughs) You know, he has four home runs, uh, four solo home runs. But other than that, if you look at his spring, it's just kind of meh, right? I mean, he had batted 231. His 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 defense never really was that great. He doesn't really have much of an arm, and I, I just I just don't see him being good enough to push the other guys out of the way who, who perform much better, uh, who they're more invested in for the future. Uh, certainly, Adam Hastley, a first round draft pick, he's he's under team control for years. You know, you're not going to burn uh, a year of his development just to squeeze Herrera on the roster for his last year of this contract. And that's money spent anyway. And, and on top of all that, you'd have to cut somebody in order to get Herrera onto the 40 man roster. And Dave Dombrowski in his career, he has really shown that he values that, that roster space. And I don't see him cutting a pitching prospect just so that he can find a way to get Herrera and his 231 batting average on the roster. I, I just don't see it. So, obviously, it doesn't seem that this is the end of this. I mean, is there a way that he can find himself back on this roster? I mean, did they do this essentially? Now, Dombrowski said today that PR was not really a consideration here, uh, that they really felt that, you know, and I think you laid it out very well. I talked about this in the open today. The fans see four home runs and feel that that means he was the best guy. 224 on base percentage. Quinn and Hastley both had much better on base numbers, uh, hitting at the bottom of the order there. They're going to hit in the eighth spot most likely. The four home runs is what stood out for Herrera. The on-base percentage is what stood out for the other two guys. But I think Girardi mentioned it. Whoever's on the opening day, that doesn't mean you're on May 1st, June 1st, July 1st. So is this a way to say, look, we're going to go with you two guys. You earned it, but there's an all-star, a former all-star, waiting for his chance if you don't play well. (laughs) Odubel Herrera, the All Star, is so far in the rear view that I, I, I just, I just don't see it. I, I really, really don't see it. And, and I mean, he's going to have to go to AAA. And even when he goes to AAA, he, he's going to be playing in a corner, right? They're going to want, they're going to want Mickey Moniak to be in center field at AAA, right? So, I mean, they're going to want to see him develop. So he's going to be in one corner. Scott Kingery is probably in your other corner outfield spot. Um, I, I don't know. I, I just, you don't, I just think, they, don't, see you don't think they'd say, Kingery, go play second base. You think they're going to continue to put him in the outfield? I, I think he's got to be an outfielder for, for it to work. I mean, I, I know it's one of the questions coming up, but I want to give it all away. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think Herrera is still kind of a – he really has, has no place. I mean, he's going to go to AAA. He'll be wherever – that just he's going to be a guy that fills in wherever they need somebody at the moment. I'm, I I just I don't know. I, I don't I don't see that path forward. I really don't. Um. All right. Uh, Connor wants to know now that Herrera didn't make the roster, who comes up first if Quinn, which is the most likely guy, or Hazley end up <laughs> getting hurt. Well, by the way, I I have said for years that that one year I don't know if it'll be with the Phillies or not, but Roman Quinn's going to stay healthy and have a really really good year. Maybe this maybe this is the year. Who knows? But, um, but but yeah. If I think that that if they're confronted with with an injury, it'll be de- it'll depend on how long this person's going to be out. I don't think you're going after Ojibwe Herrera if somebody is out for two weeks. You go with somebody who's on your forty man roster, and that that means that maybe it's it's Mickey Moniak, but it also could be someone like Nick Maton, who you might have noticed him a little bit in spring training, kind of as sort of a utility type. Uh, playing around the infield and and he can play some outfield too for you. So 
I think they're likely to grab somebody who's on the 40 man, bring them up for just a little bit or come back. But then if there's a long-term injury, well, then the discussion's much more difficult because Mickey Moniak is, is, is the one that you really want to see play. So if there's a path for Mickey Moniak to be playing on a regular basis, well, then you might want Mickey Moniak coming up to, to fill a long-term spot in center field. So right. I, 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 st- I still really have a hard time figuring out where Herrera fits in all this. I feel like the Phillies said all the right things because they, they know that you can't double punish a guy, but I, I, I think the ship has long sailed. I think the Phillies have moved on and they, they, they've spent the money already and uh, Herrera is going to be in the minor leagues until he's a free agent at the end of the year. All right. Uh, Frank Close, of course, uh, his Phillies mailbag every Tuesday during the Phillies season right here on 97.3 ESPN. We have a lot of people texting in, by the way, uh, who have Phillies questions. I feel like there is some buzz for this Phillies team. Like, I feel like there are, uh, there is some legitimate um, expectations for the first time in a while. Uh, Brian wants to know, why would the Phillies only carry one lefty in the bullpen? Tony Watson got picked up, by the way, uh, out in Anaheim. Uh, so there was a lefty that they had in their system. Jojo Romero, who pitched well, he did not make the opening day roster. They only went with Jose Alvarado in that bullpen. He's the only lefty that made it. Yeah, I was a little bit surprised at this. You know, I thought the moment that Tony Watson uh, was was told he wasn't going to make the roster and he opted out. And by the way, he only got $1 million from the Angels, even after you know uh, the Phillies would have uh, given him $3 million. But after, after he moved on, I thought for sure that the, that meant that Jose Alvarado and Jojo Romero would be your lefties. And just trying to trying to make sense of this, I can think of, of two things. One might be that the Phillies prefer the matchup of somebody like Sean Coonrod against the Atlanta Braves. Now, one thing about the Braves, after you get past Freddie Freeman, all their power guys are right-handed bats. Uh, Ronald Acuna Jr. is a righty. Marcelo Zuna is a righty. Uh, and their their rookie uh, Christian Pache, he's he's a righty. So, so maybe they felt that they would this would be a better matchup to start, uh, and maybe they felt that uh, uh, you know that one lefty will get you through Freddie Freeman in the late innings if you need it. Uh, but you know maybe Romero comes up pretty soon. Uh, maybe by the second series against the Mets, maybe maybe they maybe they make a swap out there. Maybe they're just trying to 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 go right after the Braves this first season, but. You know, I, I think the other thing, too, is that with this three batter rule, you kind of lose that role of what they would call the loogie, the left hander, one guy out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and so you don't have a guy coming in just to, to get one lefty batter out and then you're on to the next reliever. So so whoever comes in to, to pitch is going to face lefties and righties. And so maybe they figure that that Archie Bradley, Brandon Kinsler, Hector Neris at the back innings, they're going to get lefties and righties out. So. Maybe you just need one lefty closer to the middle innings. I don't. I, I don't know. I, I still would have taken two personally, but we'll we'll see what happens going forward. And by the way, Alvarado, of course, the day after he's named is sort of the only lefty. He gives up four runs in two thirds of an inning. Yeah, he's going to be uh, interesting. <laughs> I, I feel like he's going to be public enemy number one some nights and love the other. He's going to be a polarizing guy that people either love because he throws a hundred miles an hour, uh, aka he hits the home runs. And he's going to be hated because he doesn't know how to bunt down the third baseline when there's a shift on. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's the uh, thing. Steve wants to know, Frank, do you feel the bullpen has drastically changed for the better since the last couple of years? Well, it's got to be better than last year. I think that's that's really – I think that goes without saying. You know, um, Well, he's also going – the question from Steve, who's watching on Facebook. What's up, Steve? Uh, he's going back to some of Kapler's bullpens who were also not very good. Yeah, you know, the Phillies just haven't had the talent. And I will say the fatal flaw of Matt Clintac's career basically was his bullpen construction. I mean, it, it, I, I really, that goes to Matt Clintac. If you look over the last several years, you know, he hasn't really given them much to work with. His his acquisitions were always the the high-priced veteran who can't stay healthy, the Pat Nishaks, the, the Tommy Hunters. Uh, I, I, think that, I think that's a construction issue. And I think that really fell to the to the general manager. I really like that Dave Dombrowski brought in Brandon Kinsler. He brought in Archie Bradley. You know, and when you talk about having two solid, reliable veteran uh, pieces like that to add, I mean, that's a big deal, uh, especially in those those games that are close. That you go to those high impact guys. You know, you feel like the Phillies have some options. 
No, last year, I mean, not, not that Hector Neris was perfect, uh, but the last couple of years, Neris has been the best reliever, but you often felt like he was the only one you had. So um, I, I, I think this is, this is going to be much, much better than the last couple of years. And, and you know. Well, isn't that, um, I mean, Klitschak essentially tried to do something similar where he brought in, like, these non-roster guys. The problem was none of them stuck. No, well, I see. I th- I put Kinsler in a different category. I, I thought oh, I never thought for a second that he wouldn't make this team, and I think that was. I think there was kind of a behind the scenes handshake agreement like that because he he took less. He took um, he did not take a guarantee, but he took uh, a little bit more money from the Phillies and the, the guarantee with the Marlins. So I'm pretty sure they said, "Oh yeah, you know, you're, you're probably going to make it," and and he believed it. But uh, Kinsler's a a different category than than. Uh, 44 year old Bud Norris last year. I, mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how old he really was, but you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the guys they brought in last year, they were, they were, they were so far past their expiration date. I don't think any of them were even in major league camp this year that I even noticed. Right. You know, I probably named yeah, five guys. The closer, that those veterans. the closer from the, the nationals was in last year too. Who was that? Drew story. Drew story. Yeah, I, I haven't heard of Drew story in this year. I haven't heard of Bud Norris this year. I haven't heard of, but actually the one I did hear about is Francisco Liriano who pitched a perfect spring for the Blue Jays and then got released. Standard. Oh, wow, he got released. So he, he, yeah, opt, he, did. he opted out last year, though, didn't he? Yeah, it, it, hard to say. Yeah. It, maybe it was a little bit of each. All right, uh, we got two minutes for this last one because this is an interesting. Gabby wants to know, what future does Scott Kingery have with the Phillies? Well, they got to figure this out. <laughs> I mean, I did think they that's fail what it comes him or did he, does he just stink? I, I got to think he's got more talent than this, you know, uh, you know, the one interesting story a couple of days ago uh, in the Inquirer about how he worked with an independent hitting consultant a couple of years ago, before 2017, before he got his money. Um, did that did that mess him up a little bit? You know, I, I think what's going to happen is well, all the hitting coaches he's had, his independent hitting coach, he's got to hit. They got to figure out if he can hit um, more than the positions. You know, he's kind of blocked at second base and shortstop the next two years. GD signed for two years. Gene Segura signed for two more years. Uh, you have Bryson Stott, your top prospect, plays shortstop and, and second base. So he, he's got to get his bat to work. And 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 the best thing I can think of is down at AAA, they 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 just get the bat right and then figure out where to stick them. And it might be the outfield. Um, Andrew McCutcheon's leaving as a free agent next year, so you have potentially two outfield positions to fill next year that they could look at. Um, if there's a DH, maybe Bo move. I don't know. There's there's so much that could happen, but 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 before they get to that, well, they could they move Bo to first and right. try to you trade Hoskins and then put Kingery in the infield. And I mean, that's a lot of moving parts. If they value him, look, they gave him that contract. I know that GM's not in place anymore, but the organization valued what this kid brought, and and I think that they just did him a disservice. I mean, moving him all over, tweaking his batting, you know, styles. I mean. Uh, it just seems that uh, maybe a fresh start for him. And maybe this minor league uh, stint will do him well. Who knows? Yeah, I think they're sending him there to, to help him, right? They could have made him a utility player and be the last guy off the bench like Ronald Torres is going to be and not really care. But, you know, they have $6 million next year, $8 million the year after that. That's starter money. He, they got to they got to get find out if, if he can start for them. And, and really, that's what this comes down to. They need to let him play every day. And that's a very expensive utility player if they conclude he can. Uh, Frank Close, always great. Um, by the way, at Frank Close, follow him on Twitter. The mailbag every Tuesday right here on the Sports Bash Live on 97.3 ESPN. And check out all his Phillies coverage at 97.3 ESPN.com. Uh, Frank's Philly stuff has been uh, the number one most read stuff on the website all week long. So it looks like the Phillies uh, are a hot item this year, Frank. Uh, I better write more. (laughs) (laughs) Back again on uh, the Mailbag Tuesday. Get your questions in for Frank at Frank Close. Frank, great job as always, pal. Great to talk to you, Mike.